These horses are dying from heat and dehydration as heat waves continue around the world. Severe drought and heat in Kazakhstan's Manjistow Peninsula have created a scarcity of water and food for horses, cattle, and sheep, killing multitudes of animals. This has left other animals weak from malnourishment and prone to parasites and illnesses. One farmer told Reuters there had been poor grazing for three years, but the hot, dry conditions in 2021 decimated what grass was still available. Manjistow lies on the eastern shore of the Caspian Sea, which is reportedly becoming shallower. Svetlana Dolgik, the head of climate studies at Kazakhstan state weather forecaster Kazgidramat, told Reuters that average temperatures in the country are rising by 0.3 degrees Celsius every 10 years. She said more rain and winter snow in northern regions of Kazakhstan could have a positive effect on Manjistow, but that agriculture in the country is considered at risk from climate change. The Kazakhstan government has said that it will be sending barley to the area, but for many animals, it might be too little, too late. Sockeye salmon in the Columbia River are dying. As you can see, they're in lethally hot water. Uh, we're in a salmon crisis. These salmon are reportedly getting sick and dying because their river is too hot. The Pacific Northwest's Columbia River reached temperatures over 71 degrees Fahrenheit in July 2021, which is much higher than the Clean Water Act's legal limit of 68 degrees. We're seeing heat. Imagine the heat that we're feeling they're, they're feeling it 10 times worse in that river. They're suffocating, they're weakened, and they just want to come up to their home, their beautiful home. This is causing lesions and fungus on the salmon who live there. Sockeye salmon are returning from the ocean. They've spent a couple years there building their strength so they can come back all the way to their natal streams. The salmon left the Columbia River to escape the heat and swam into one of its tributaries, the Little White Salmon River, which is where this video was recorded. These fish are expected to die in the tributary without spawning. There are tens of thousands of salmon still at risk in the Columbia and Snake Rivers, and it is too soon to tell how many fish have already died or what the impact will be on their endangered population. The reservoirs these dams create are just stagnant cesspools that are heating up and killing them. They can't even make it to their home to spawn, to reproduce. But we need cold, clean water, and we've got to take the Snake River dams down to make that happen. We need a free-flowing river again. That will restore our salmon back. Right now, there's a proposal in Congress to take down four of the dams, which could help the salmon as they swim their way upstream. We need people to wake up to see what it is, how important they are to not only just indigenous people, but all people on this earth. Conservationists are tattooing these birds to protect them from poaching. The sacred falcon is endangered, with only 12,200 to 29,800 mature birds left in the world. They are poached and sold for falconry and hunting, with prices reaching tens of thousands of dollars for one bird. To discourage this, these conservationists in Siberia are tattooing SOS on the falcon's beaks and ID numbers on their feet to lower their value and tell poachers the falcons were born in hatcheries. 
кольца просто-напросто срезать и снять, и сделать птицу товарной, да, и никто не придется, что она выпущена с питомника, вот, а татуировка будет дополнительной защитой. Sacred falcons are found in Eastern Europe, and some migrate through the Middle East and Africa. Tattooing only took about 15 minutes per bird, and they reportedly didn't seem to be in any stress or pain during the process. By the, way. Oh. the tattooed birds will be released into the wild or placed in wild sacred falcon nests in national parks. We can almost certainly paint the warming oceans as having a role in what we are seeing with the sickly sharks in Sipadan. The geographical location of Sipadan in the middle of nowhere with limited and controlled human activities means that the marine water quality there is not affected by domestic wastewater and other land-based sources. We cannot ignore that things are happening there, changes are happening there due to higher temperatures and of course we, we also understand our, our earth is increasing in temperatures by one or two degrees Celsius on 10 in, in a decade and so on. So these things are real.